Today we're gonna try something a little bit different. I'm a little nervous to see how it goes, but I think it's gonna be fun and hopefully interesting for you guys to watch. I'm going to score a short little 20 second animation um, in almost real time. I've only looked at this a couple times. I have a couple ideas brewing, but I'm gonna outline my process and I'm gonna show you how I go from literally having a blank score to having this finished piece by the time we're done, hopefully. So let's just jump right in because I think this will be a longer video. So this is a short little 20 second animation um, from an animator named Rasmus. Really cool, I found it online and I offered to do a short score for him. So let's just watch it um, so we can decide what we're gonna be doing here and I'll put it in full screen. So a couple things off the bat here. Uh, we've got a, a bell tolling in the background, and it's tolling a C, if you can hear that. So whatever decisions I'm gonna make musically, I'm probably gonna wanna move around that. So I'm not gonna wanna pick a key that's gonna interfere too much. Off the top of my head, I'm kinda thinking maybe an F might be nice. C might be a little on the nose because we're gonna hear the C. Um, but F is gonna play nicely, so we'll actually hear the bell tolling. I can sort of demonstrate that. <gasps> You hear how there's not too much interference now, whereas if I was playing a different key, it might actually clash a little bit. Next, just looking in terms of like the environment, obviously we're going for something kind of fantasy-like here. It's intimate, you know, we have just this woman here and her cat, uh, she's reading a book, it's quiet activities, um, other than the actual levitation moment. It's pretty intimate, so we're not gonna wanna go with something too excessively large here. The first thing that I think is useful is to find a tempo. Now I don't wanna score every moment here, um, but looking through it, huh. that little moment where she goes, huh, I think is a good starting point for the cue. So moving from that point, oh. I think our next hit point wouldn't actually be here, but actually would be here. Because you can hear even in the sound design, there's a more emphatic boom that happens right here. So we're kind of looking to match those two points. I kind of thought something maybe in three, four would be nice and we've already determined F. So if I can look for a tempo here. All right, so see there I'm doing three, four but I'm landing on the wrong beat. So that means I either have to go a little bit faster or potentially a little slower. I'm gonna try a little bit faster here. Beautiful. So you can see that kind of lands nicely. Now, what I do in my setup is I actually have a, a capture record button that I can do. That little performance there, I was actually able to capture that. So let's find that start point again. Right about right here. So let's see first if we can just tweak to get a downbeat going um, right around that spot. The first thing I'll do is just uh, lock this in so that it can't move when I change the tempo. Next, I'm gonna try and adjust so that my downbeat of something, this is just strictly to start the start of the cue. We're just a little bit late actually. Right there. Okay, so we'll use this as our starting point. So let's now have this be in three, four. So now, we have a three, four going all the way through. Let's take a look at this. And let's see now if we can get from here We've got, I think, four measures before we get to the major lift. <laughs> the major lift. So let's find that. That's five. So we want to go a little slower now. There we go. All right, so now let's look at this. Start. Beautiful. Now let's see if it lines up to the end. So I think maybe a little accelerando here, just because there's a little bit more excitement and we also wanna line up on something maybe when the, everything drops. Let's try even a little bit more. Maybe a little something like that.
Let's just try that for starters. Okay, so now we have kind of a basic tempo set. So now we're gonna go to actually composing the piece. I'm sort of picturing harp, maybe some strings. I don't know if it'd be full ensemble or if it would just be like a couple solo players. But let's start with the harp. And you don't wanna invest in detail too early um, because stuff is prone to change. We're just gonna set like a basic um, idea here and see if it needs to be tweaked as we go. That's sort of the idea I had rolling around in my head when I was watching this. So let's try that. Okay, very basic. Let's go through and do a little bit of quantization work here. We can always clean that up and remove stuff later. All right, let's throw in a little delay in here. I always like eighth note uh, delays or quarter note delays against the stuff that I usually do. Let's hear how this sounds. Now I'm kind of thinking, uh, well, we'll support the harp, I think, with a little bit of pits. Nothing too crazy, just something subtle. Just something like that. And I think maybe either a little tremolo on the top or a little bit of harmonics. Now I like to use this breath controller sometimes. It's Tech control, it's really nice. I can control stuff and play with both hands if I need to. I can also use this other controller I have and I kind of alternate between this and the, uh, for winds. So let's try a little bit of upper tremolo and see how that sounds. Yep, not totally sold on that. It sounds a little bit too a little bit too tense, I think, actually. So let's try a couple other options. How about just a subtle pad underneath? Nope. I think we may not need anything. Um, not strings. Pause. Okay, so what happened here is the camera stopped rolling and I didn't realize and I was still composing. Apparently because I can't multitask, I forgot to hit the record on the computer for the second part of this. Uh, so I'm just gonna catch you up. <laughs> um, man, this is why I don't do recording while I compose. Last we left off, we were doing harp stuff, a little bit of bass pizzicato support. I also worked on the very ending. I thought a little lift comedically would be nice for the cat. You notice that we have this kind of, um, we kind of have this moment at the end where the cat kind of lifts up into the air. And I wanted to kind of draw the audience's attention away from the magic and onto the cat. So I did a little pizzicato thing here that sounds like this. Now what I've done also is, I thought with the harp ostinato and the pizzicato, it would be nice, see this is what we've got right now. I felt like a woodwind line would be nice to kind of accentuate her character, make it focus on her as an individual also. It's uh, winds I also just find really pensive and soloistic. Um, so I've got this uh, flute line here that sounds like this. And that prompted the idea to actually have a little dovetail moment. A dovetail is like an orchestral crossfade where we have one instrument taper off and we have another kind of fade in, um, in the oboe, because I thought that would sound nice. Uh, so it sounds like this. Yeah, now you notice that the upper flute line kind of fades out and I wanted to find a way to sustain that in a more colorful way than just using flute. So I had uh, a French horn come in here. So you have like a three part thing. And listening to that, I actually think I'd like to have the horn start right there, but I wanna have the flute thing sustained. So let's see if maybe we can do that in the strings. Also got a little chalesse pattern here going, kind of just to help the harp out, add a little more movement.
Now, we've also got a bass drum hit and a very subtle timpani roll. Brum. Now we have to figure out the color that I want here based on the harmony. And it's, it's tricky, this is a tricky moment. I'm struggling with this part a little bit. My first instinct is to go for a six chord. And what kind of instrumentation too, you know, choir is another option too. Let's give it a, uh, let's give it a choir. Let's give it a try and see what happens. I'm kind of thinking it's a little much. I also don't really like that color change there. Let's see in context with the audio. All right, so right off the bat, I'm noticing we're having a, maybe a bit too many things enter at once. Let's see, it sounds with just the ostinato. I don't like the string tremolo entering there. Let's try maybe here. And this is me getting really finicky, but I don't wanna have the harp intro rolled with the delay, so we're gonna do this. And now when the chalice comes in, I think it should come in after she does the first lift. Yeah, see like that's still too early. We need to have it bum 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 bum. Already liking this a lot better. So let's not worry about the dovetailing of the uh, flute nobo. Let's pull the flute over this way. Have the entrance two measures later. Much better. I, I hope you guys can see the difference in that, that there's a gradual entrance into this. We're getting layers of ideas. So we're having like realization moment. Let's have realization moment also supported with, let's go for a triangle. Let's have a slow fade in of the tremolo here from nothing. Having a love-hate thing with this celeste. I wanna really keep the flute entrance sparse. Yeah, that's better. And I think maybe a little mark tree, maybe a little mark tree would be nice. Ah, that one's nice. Something slow, you know. Yeah, now I'm kind of thinking actually maybe we just do octaves so we don't at the end. Yeah, that's, that's, that's way better. You know, it shows our hand a little bit less. Let's try suspended cymbal too, right where we have the big swell. Actually worked. <laughs> yeah, not totally sold on the choir. I get what I'm going for. That's much better because it's uh, not quite up in the high register. Now let's try a couple of string, string patches just to see what happens. Now orchestrally, I have to think about the fact that we've got this pizzicato line going through and think about which instruments would be doing that. But for now, for sketching purposes, and because this is relatively short, I normally I would orchestrate all the way out through the strings, but I think for this, I'm just gonna leave it as the sections. It sounds fine. Let's try that. I like it. I don't want tremolo on the bottom. I think it'd be a little too uh, muddy. Actually sounded pretty nice. Now, if we listen to the strings and check them out here, you'll notice we've got a lot of overlap happening uh, later in the piece. Let's listen to that. Now, at this point, I spent two useless minutes trying out voicings that didn't work, and I fell into my classic trap that I'll talk about. All right, so you see what I'm falling into right now? I'm falling into a habit that I have, and I'm sure a lot of other composers do, where I start to get caught up in the details, when really what I should do is I should look at this voicing as a whole. What am I trying to voice here? I'm trying to voice as big a voice as, uh, voicing as I can here. But I only have a limited number of strings. 
So let's take a look at how we can fill in the inner voicings. We could use some woodwinds if we wanted to, or horn. So you know we want strings in the bottom and on the top. Now that's a nice voicing there. We could consider that would be maybe like violins one and two divisi. Let's try that. Let's do this. Let's taper them. So it feels like they're fading out as the pits happens. So those are our violins there. Now we have to look at the violas, celli, and bass. That's definitely the kind of voicing that I want. Uh, let's see if we can clean it up a little bit, and then we can sub out some of the string stuff in the woodwinds. Now you see I've cleared out this register, which is nice. Let's have that register taken somewhere else. We could do trombones potentially. Let's see if, how that would sound. That might even still be a little bit too loud for my liking. I kind of think I'd like to keep it a woody kind of feel for this. So maybe let's do clarinets and bassoon and see how that sounds. I like that much better. If you can hear the difference, the bassoon gives that woodsy kind of feel, which for me always evokes fantasy. Beautiful. Let's add in oboes just to be complete. We'll give them a little something to do, or we'll have them double the pizzicatos, which would be nice. Let's try that, because I noticed that the pizzicatos are kind of getting drowned out. So an easy way to do this would just be to take the pizzicato at the spot that we're looking for, and then paste it over where the oboe is, and then basically just figure out where we want it to start. See, that sounds really cool. I like it. All right, here's a listen through with the sound. <laughs> it's really nice, I really like it. A couple fixes that I want to do. I don't like the doubling. I think it's actually a bit funnier when it's the oboe. Oboe has a bit of comedic effect, uh, maybe more so than flute does. Again, I really use my ears for most of this to guide me. Why don't we double that? See how that sounds. Yep, I like it. And I think we should push this a little farther, even off the beat. Now I like to isolate some of the elements just to make sure everything's coming through. Now that I've ha heard the other elements, I think we can have the choir actually up a little bit. Let's have them say, say, ah. <laughs> right, I like the top note. Yeah, see we have a, a higher push and then it pulls down a little bit. I'd like to make that upper ah in the choir uh, legato because you don't always hear the middle voices when you're doing sustained patches, but you do hear the upper voices. For me, that makes a big difference. Now I would like to have, I think, a harp run. Now the way I do harp runs is I roll on the white keys of the piano, and then I change the tuning later. It makes it a lot easier than me trying to play a scale. That. Sometimes I'll exaggerate this a little bit. And then I can just go through here. Change the tunings appropriately. Mm -hmm. Now, she has the moment where she knows she can do this power, and I think I'd like to have the timpani crescendo for a bit longer to show that she is about to unleash. Bit messy, but you know, you won't notice in the mix. 
that's a little better. And then let's see, uh, anything else we can do in terms of the percussion? Cause the percussion's pretty nice. I was thinking maybe tubular bell uh, or chimes. Let's see if that's too, too much. Okay, I did that on the note of the French horn. I think we might be good, honestly. I think it's good to go. Let's give it a final listen. Thanks so much for watching that. That was, you know, me like puttering around trying to find what I was gonna do, but this is how my process goes, you know? I wish I knew what I was doing right on the onset, but I don't. And hopefully you found this process interesting. If you did, leave a like, let me know if you have any comments, and let me know if you'd like to see this again in the future. Hope you have a great week. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.